Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Modding News, my weekly video where I talk about what's new and upcoming in the world of retro console modding. First up this week is the Catponent X from Absolucy, which is an internal component video adapter for the original Xbox. Let's take a look at the comments here to see if we can find what the actual board looks like. Here is a picture of the V2 Catponent X. This adapter is very reminiscent of the XOSVP. The XOSVP, if you don't know, is an external adapter that gives you component video and optical audio out. The XOSVP uses this crazy VGA to Xbox AV port little plug here, and then it goes into this 3D printed enclosure here. The Caponent X board looks very similar to the XOSVP board, and Lucy said it even shares some of the components with it. But the Caponent X is meant to be mounted to the actual Xbox AV port, so instead of a thick VGA cable coming out of the back, it's going to be permanently mounted to the Xbox AV port in the back. This mod is going to be soldered internally somehow, and Lucy said it's supposed to have superior quality at the higher resolutions because this mod bypasses the Xbox's internal low-pass filter. There's still some work to be done. It looks like they're working on a 3D printed enclosure for it but it's nice to see a new analog video solution for the original Xbox. I sort of regret being hard on Gamebox the other day when I mentioned their weird flex boot okay flex cables because now Helder has developed quick solder flex cables for the Pico boot for both DOL001 and DOL101 GameCubes. You can't really see these warnings on the website very well, but it mentions that these flex cables were designed around the original installation method for the Peekaboo on the Peekaboo GitHub, and that Peekaboo is still experimental. And we now know that WebHDX is working on updates to the Peekaboo that will have different wiring that will pretty much make these flex cables obsolete. And on top of that, WebHDX is going to be developing official flex cables for the Peekaboo mod. And another thing I wanted to mention is WebHDX took a look at these flex cables and he mentioned that there's no switch or diode on the 3 volt line. When you plug the Raspberry Pi Pico in to update Pico Boot, the 3 volts will come back from the Raspberry Pi Pico into the GameCube even if the GameCube is not plugged in. I'm not necessarily sure how dangerous that is to the GameCube, but it's probably recommended to unsolder this if you want to update your Raspberry Pi Pico if there is an update between now and when the wiring will be updated. Now hopefully that doesn't sound too harsh on these flex cables because I love the fact that mod creators are willing to support it and create products for it. So if you're interested in flex cables for the Pico Boot for both 001 and 101 GameCubes, now there's another option available from Helder. A few weeks ago, I talked about the SD2 SB2 Pro that allows you to get at your micro SD card when you're using the Game Boy Player. At the time, I didn't know who the original creator of that SD2 SB2 Pro adapter was. I just linked to some random AliExpress seller not knowing that the supposed original creator was still selling them. I actually tweeted about that AliExpress adapter that I bought and a bunch of people were saying that the real creator of this mod is Rugal KOF94 on eBay. Anyways, I figured I would just mention this listing. I'll put it in the link in the description. I don't really love linking to AliExpress when I can always link to the original author. And now that I know that they're actually creating and selling this product, then I feel better about recommending people buy this instead of from AliExpress. It's been a while since I've talked about anything Mike Chi related, but we finally have a teaser of the on-screen display for the RetroTINK 4K. In this first clip here, you can see this is the top level menu of the RetroTINK 4K, and then pretty quickly it transitions over to the input source selection screen. So then for the rest of the video, you can see Mike just going through different sources. So we have RGB SCART, RGB HV, on the HD15 port, S-Video, HDMI, and Component. I think this input selection screen is pretty sleek, and I'm excited to hear more information about the RetroTINK 4K Pro. 8-Bit Mods is now working with Bixie Walsht, now known as RetroTime, to create an injection molded version of their N64 Blue Retro adapter. Bixie Walsht had created 3D printed versions of this N64 Blue Retro adapter, and they were selling them earlier this year. But now they're going to be partnering with 8-Bit Mods, and it's exciting to see that they're going to be creating an injection molded version of this. The only downside is 8-Bit Mods is located in the UK, so if you're from the United States, you might have to pay a little bit of extra shipping. And I'm wondering if there's going to be a US 
reseller available for people to purchase if they live in the United States. And you know, while I appreciate the fact that we get so many of these 3D printed projects, I think that injection molded is definitely gonna create a better product for the end user. So it's really awesome to see this project become successful and be able to create an injection molded version of it for people to have. I've been meaning to build a Game Boy Macro for a while now. I actually have all the parts, including a really gross yellowed clear DS Lite. If you don't know what the Game Boy Macro is, it's a DIY mod that lets you make a Game Boy Advance out of a DS Lite sort of like a bigger Game Boy Micro. Shout out to Joshua Guess here on Instructables. There's a sort of a tutorial on if you wanted to do this yourself just from scratch. You basically have to remove the top screen of the DS Lite, but then you're left with these weird bumps on the bottom shell. So in this Instructable, it just shows you how to cut those bumps off and then they end up filling it with some epoxy, letting that dry, sanding it and painting it to just create a flat front shell for that DS light. Anyways, instead of doing that, Humble Bazooka is working on a full shell replacement for the macro. As you can see here, there's a bunch of pictures. This is gonna be 3D printed. And I really like the finish of this. This looks very simplistic. I'm kind of a sucker for the very overly simple sort of finishes. Hopefully we can get some more information from Humble Bazooka soon because I'm definitely gonna be checking this shell out. We finally have a picture of the GBHD Advance SP consoleizer shell from Gamebox Systems. The GBHD Advance SP is going to be a Game Boy Advance SP consoleizer from Gamebox. It sounds like this case design is still a work in progress but I've been curious to see what this is going to look like in comparison to the GBHD consoleizer. The GBHD consoleizer from Zwenergy is, as far as I know, the smallest currently available Game Boy Advance consoleizer that uses the Game Boy Advance SP board. So I'm really interested to see how the GBHD matches up with this shell. I wonder if they're gonna be a little bit of a similar size. I don't imagine the video output is gonna be any different between the GBHD Advance SP and the GBHD Advance, their original consoleizer, but we're just gonna have to wait and see if Gamebox announces any additional features for this consoleizer. And for the big story this week, Dan Coons has just teased the hardware revision for the DC Digital, but instead of it being inside of a Dreamcast, it's actually inside of a Naomi 2 arcade board. I actually don't know that much about arcade systems, so I did a little bit of research on the Naomi 2. It seems like the Naomi 2 is based off of the Naomi 1, and the Naomi One shares some similar architecture with the Dreamcast. Here we're gonna actually see a close up of the hardware revision and CEO actually pointed out that they're using a different FPGA. The original DC Digital used an Intel Cyclone FPGA and the updated one is going to use a try on FPGA. So this is really a two for one. It's awesome that we get an updated revision for the Dreamcast, but now you can have the DC Digital work in a Naomi Two arcade board. It's exciting to finally see some screenshots of this hardware revision. Now, I wonder if that means that we're getting close to a release date for the updated DC Digital. That's it for this week. If you want to suggest a new story to me, follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. If you want to watch older Retro Money News videos, you can check out this playlist here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.